Network. Eddie, you mentioned Johnny Fisher and compared him to one Henry Cooper. Could you just expand on that? Yeah, it's actually Derek Chisora I had a conversation with. He said he reminds me a little bit, you know, the popularity of like old Henry Cooper. You know, sort of good stand up punch, you know, and, and obviously I, I never really like comparing people to greats, but the popularity of this young man is like something we've never seen before. I mean, that was his, that was his 12th fight tonight. You know, even AJ wasn't headlining in his 12th fight. Like, AJ headlined against Gary Cornish, I think it was his 15th, 14th fight, something like that. And, you know, obviously AJ sold a lot more tickets to the casual fans, but in terms of physical ticket sales, I've never worked with anyone who sells as many tickets as Johnny Fisher. Well, that atmosphere was wild. Imagine everyone going home on a train after that. Like, absolutely pumped. England have won. Johnny Fisher's won in 35 seconds, and they'll all be back. But so we but we gotta get we gotta get it right, John. There's no there's no tearing rush and there's definitely no need to make a mistake. Let's talk about your reaction to that England game as well. We all yeah. saw yeah. the reaction of the whole crowd, but it was a good atmosphere it's and actually like, a great night. Especially a penalty shooter to win on penalties, because we never win on penalties. And it's just we look really composed, we score all five penalties. The performance was much better than last time. Who's to say we can't get it dead right in the semis or nearly dead right and they're dead right in the final? Tough game against Holland, but I thought the boxing actually worked really well. I mean, we were very lucky with some of the fights, like they went points when we thought they wouldn't go points and stuff like that. But I'm not saying we'll do it again, but actually got away with it and it was good fun. Yeah, one more thing from me Fraser Clark, Fabio Warley, you've mentioned those names and you said you think Johnny could beat them. Yeah. What about Johnny's style do you think is better than theirs? I just think Johnny has a better engine. I think he punches really hard. I mean, he punches harder than Fraser Clark, in my opinion. Fabio's a sharp shooter, but that fight will take a lot out of both men, particularly Fabio Wardley. Um, and I'm not saying it's like, they're 50-50 fights, but I just think he can beat them. But when we take that fight, they won't be 50-50 fights. That's, that's the plan. Um, so we just need that little extra experience. Yeah. Maisie Rose suffered defeat tonight. Um, I think everyone was, was pretty clear what the next step for her was going to be Kyle Watson. Um, what is sort of the, the, the path now that, that I suppose the Watson fight is off the table for Maisie Rose? Yeah, I mean, I thought she was disappointing, you know, particularly in the first half of the fight. And there's no point beating around the bush. Like, when a prospect gets beat, the, you've got to tell the truth. And that, you know, you say to Maisie that that wasn't good enough for you because you're a very good fighter and a special fighter. And in the first half of that fight, you weren't good enough. Second half, you were much better, and I thought the second half of the fight was quite close, but she'd already lost the first four or five rounds. So the fight's over at that point, really. So you've got to learn, and the key is how you come back. You know, we'll support her 100%, you know, she'll have a little rest, come back, get a win, and then dive back into another fight, whether that's a rematch, whether that's Clay Watson. But, you know, you only get so many opportunities to lose, if you like, and you, she's got to make sure she improves and comes back stronger. You mentioned Australia and a few other areas um, there for Johnny Fisher, but when you see that crowd tonight and you see sort of the buzz, is there not part of you that's like, you know, we could make the copper box almost like the home of Johnny yes, Fisher? Yes, but the, if you make that mistake, then you end up matching him wrong. Because what you can't do is you can't come here and fight Marius Wack, right? Because it's just shit. So, and I don't want to put shit on as main event. So it's like Marius Wack's a good fight for Johnny Fisher to learn maybe a fight or two ago, to get some rounds, maybe, yeah? But that can sit three fights down a card, no one moans, and you get away with it. We need, not Maris Wack, but we need a couple of those fights before we headline again. Because when we headline again, we'll probably headline against Adelaide, maybe the loser of Fabio Wardley against Fraser Clark, maybe even the winner. But if we can get two or three fights against someone that will give us some rounds, I'll be a lot more comfortable going into those fights because what I don't want to do is just start headlining against anybody. Because it's just like, you've got to make it a special night. And you've got to make it every, not every three months, every five or six months. So I think he'll headline again here, probably January or February or something like that. Um, but the opponent will be right and we'll be two more fights down the line against better opposition. Away from tonight, um, obviously we see the Paris Olympics coming up um, and obviously there's going to be another Team GB cycle. Um, I saw Ramtin Moussa uh, sitting yeah. there next to you at ringside tonight. Um, so what's the plan when you have that, I suppose, that sort of new goes crop of, uh, crop of Team GB athletes coming through and, and looking to turn pro? They're all good. Like, you know, they're all going to get offers. I have to make the offers based on the potential that I think people have. And that potential is based around potential ticket sales, 
exciting style, but mostly around just a gut feeling and a look in their eye to go, yeah, let's do something together. I, I want to I wanna work with you. And some of them, I mean, Joe Caldina was a great example of someone I watched in the Tri-Nations myself at York Hall, probably 15 years ago. And I went, I think he's a future world champion. And then when he turned pro, I was like, we need to sign Joe Caldina. There's other kids that I watched in the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham two years ago that I watched and I thought, I like you. you know. And, and listen, some people have, their amateur career goes like this, but we are, you know, we, we've probably had, because of that cycle, I don't know, eight fighters in the last three or four weeks that are ready to turn pro and you can't sign all of them. And some you'll miss out on and some you'll sign and shouldn't have signed. But you just have to, you know, get, get speak to people, speak to the individual and try and make the right picks. So Ramton would be someone that is of your interest. He's a very good fighter. You know, but the business has got to be right for everybody. He's got to like the deal. We've got to like the deal. We've got to have a plan. I don't just want to sign people and then not really have a strategy because that's what a lot of promoters do. And you know, you want a proper plan. You see how we bring fighters through. Johnny Fisher, you know, even even guys like Bam. Yeah, yeah. You know, Ray Ford, Pacheco. Like we know what we're doing. We've been doing it for a long time and we've got the platform and the shows around the world to do it. Hey, is, is, um, the sky, the sky the limit, John? Yeah, I think that when you're talking about like, I mean, guys with that many fights, eight, nine, ten, eleven fights, you know, Justice Hooney, Moses Itumu, Johnny Fisher, I don't know how many Jared Anderson's now, more than that, isn't it? Like, but but like, I, I put him in with all those guys, and they're really good fighters as well. But 